Okay, so from a dead stop, here we go. <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow! Jason, your vocabulary is impressive! This thing! Oh my! Hello everyone and welcome. I am sitting inside of my Tesla Model 3 Performance. And now you're thinking, wait a minute, what? I thought you bought the mid-range. So here's the thing. Usually if you buy something and you regret doing it, you either do something about it or you don't. Either way, you don't have to tell two million people that you feel like you made a mistake. So anyways, here we are. I feel like I regretted buying the mid-range and so I did something about it. Now I'm not gonna just moan about first world problems in this video. It is going to be educational. It is going to be engineering explained. We are gonna learn cool stuff about the Tesla Model 3, but I can already feel that the tone of the video is a little too serious, and so I'm going to push this button <laughs> in order to... <laughs> in order to do something about it. So Tesla has released fart mode, so you can just press this button on your steering wheel <laughs> and make these noises. I'm not doing any video editing, this is truly the car itself making these noises. And it reminds us something as humans. You don't have to take life so dang seriously. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to be silly, it's okay to have fun. Uh, that is what, you know, I as a human have learned from Tesla's fart mode. It's something we can all learn to appreciate is to just be less serious because here we have uh, you know a real car and this company decided that it was worth <laughs> releasing this uh, feature to absolutely everyone. So we're going to be answering a ton of questions about the core, keeping it educational. It's not going to be that vlog style. So two questions that I do feel are going to get brought up, but I'll simply just answer in the video description are how much did this whole ordeal cost? And then also, did I get special treatment from Tesla? And the answer to that question is absolutely not, uh, but I'll explain the reasoning behind how I know I didn't get special treatment from Tesla in the video description and also how much it cost to trade in the old car and then buy the new car. All that information, I'll break it all down in the video description if you're curious about it. So the three questions I want to talk about in this video is why did I trade in for the Model 3 performance? What are the differences between the two cars? And then finally, you know, what's the condition that this car arrived in? As many of you have watched in the previous video, uh, the Model 3 min range that I got had quite a few scratches and things on it. Uh, so I'm going to get into the condition of this car as well. Just a kind of brief overview of the condition that it arrived in. So first off, why did I trade in my mid range for the Model 3 performance? And if you heard my logic in the first video, I wanted something that was lower weight, rear wheel drive and I think those things are very cool. The thing that I didn't do, uh, which I recommend to absolutely everyone who's asking me on advice about buying a car, is go test drive that car. You have to go test drive that car and see how you personally feel about it. And I didn't do that, and there's not a great reason why I didn't. The reason why I didn't test drive the car before buying it was because I had driven almost all of the electric cars out there previously. I knew that I liked all of them, so I figured if I was gonna buy the Tesla Model 3 mid-range, which was more powerful, powerful and rear wheel drive, I assumed I would absolutely love it. And there are three things about it that I wasn't really stoked on, and that's what we're going to get into in this video, and why, and talk about how these motors work in the Tesla Model 3 uh, with the mid-range with the rear motor. So for the Model 3, all of the variants have a new style motor in the back. So Tesla uses an induction motor in the Model S and in the Model X. In the rear motor for the Tesla Model 3, in order to bring down costs, they are using a permanent magnet motor. And so Tesla calls it a three-phase, six-pole permanent magnet motor. Uh, and then up front it does have an induction motor uh, if you have the all-wheel drive. So if you just have the mid-range, it is that permanent magnet motor. Now it has been heavily speculated, and I have heard from a Tesla employee, that this is referred to as a PMSRM, Permanent Magnet Switched Reluctance Motor that is used in the back. And it's done so because it has increased efficiency and because it costs less. So what is a reluctance motor? So reluctance is to magnets what resistance is to electrical circuits. So in an electrical circuit, the current wants to take the path of least resistance. With a magnet, the magnetic flux wants to take the path of least reluctance. And so this is the principle on which a reluctance motor operates. So with an induction motor, you have a stator, the stationary portion,
portion and a rotor, the portion that rotates. Both of these, you're inducing a current in order to create a magnet. So you're, you have electromagnets that you're using current to create in both the stator and in the rotor. With a reluctance motor, the stator, you will induce a current, you will have those electric motors, but the rotor of that reluctance motor is just a solid piece of steel, something that can be attracted uh, by a magnet. And so what you have uh, in an induction motor, you're using one magnet, and then you can use the forces of that magnet to attract another magnet. With a reluctance motor, you're using one magnet and you're pulling along a little piece of steel and you're using that force of attraction in order to make the car move. Now this is cheaper because you don't have to have that copper rotor and it's also more efficient because you don't have the induction losses from inducing that current into the rotor, that IR squared losses that are associated with it, you don't have those losses in the rotor itself. So it's more efficient and it's more cost effective. However, there is a downside to it. And so based on the research that I've done, one of the problems that reluctance motors suffer from is called torque ripple. So what the heck is torque ripple? Well, torque ripple means when, <laughs> when you put your foot down, if you were to floor it, for example, you're gonna have that torque spike because you're asking for torque. So if you look at time versus torque, it's gonna spike and then you're gonna have a little ripple. You're gonna have oscillating torque. So it's not gonna be a steady torque curve that's applied. Instead, it's gonna kind of bounce around. So as that rotor is one full rotation of that rotor, it has an uneven distribution of torque. It's not a constant linear torque line. So if you floor it, you don't get Get that instant response uh, because you, you do in this Model 3 performance, we'll get into why in a second, uh, but you don't get that instant response because let's say your torque curve of that reluctance motor is going to look like this. Well, if you keep it under that curve, if you slow down how quickly you gain in torque, you can avoid that torque ripple. And so by doing so, you have a smooth acceleration. It feels good to the driver. The unfortunate part is you lose that punchiness. So part of what I said in my Tesla Model 3 mid-range review was that I was a little disappointed in the fact that when you floor it, you don't get that instant response that electric cars are, you know, they're exciting. It's, it's what makes them so special. You put your foot down and you get immediate response. And I mentioned that that Model 3 mid-range didn't quite have that. And part of why I believe that is, is because of this reluctance motor and they're trying to avoid torque ripple. Now torque ripple starts to go away as the inertia of that motor gets higher and higher. So as you start to travel faster and faster, you don't have the effects as noticeable of torque ripple. So you'll notice in my review I was talking about, I was driving you know around 35 miles an hour and I'd floor it and there'd be a little delay in when power was applied. But after I filmed that video, I came to a complete stop and I floored it and you notice a significant delay in peak torque. It's not until maybe 50 15, 20 miles an hour that you actually feel peak torque from a dead stop. So it eases into it quite gradually, which is quite different than other electric vehicles. Uh, usually they're just very punchy right off the line. You floor it, you get immediate 100% torque. And I didn't notice that in the Model 3 mid-range. So two of my major complaints with the mid-range, the first one being that, you know, if you floor it from a stop, you don't get that instant response that's so awesome that makes electric cars so cool. And the second thing, you know, once you're even up to, you know, 35 miles per hour, there's still a little bit of a delay in there. Now, part of me believes that this isn't all purely the motor. Part of me believes it's in fact Tesla tuning and differentiating between the mid-range and, you know, the performance and the all-wheel drive version. So I believe they're building in an additional delay just because you know you didn't pay for the top model uh, but I, I can't say for certain which one plays the bigger role is it the reluctance motor or is it Tesla building in a delay either way there is a noticeable delay uh, between when you put your foot down and when you get full torque and so that was one of the things I found disappointing about the Model 3 mid-range my third complaint with the Model 3 mid-range was that there is no way to just fully disable traction and stability control and you know plenty of cars do this uh, but I was a bit disappointed and that you know this very high torque very powerful electric car wasn't able to fully disable traction control. And so you have something called slip start, which you can use, uh, which is for like a snow mode. So if you need those wheels to spin, you can have that happen. Uh, but one of the things I did after I'd filmed that review, I was driving through, you know, a, a sharp corner area. And so I was taking a right turn on a very sharp corner and I just floored it with it in that slip mode and nothing happened. The, the tires did not break traction whatsoever. Now that could be for multiple reasons. It could be that tuned in preventing the torque from being there immediately uh, 
with this reluctant style motor, or it could also be that they're not allowing you to put down full torque through the traction control system. So, you know, if you're going around a sharp corner and you floor it, it's not going to spin out on you, even if you put it on the mode where you're saying, hey, I want it to spin out on me. And it's not that it should, you know, like you shouldn't just spin out on every corner, but the option to do it, the ability to do it, I think should be included in cars. Uh, if you want to be an idiot and get yourself in a wreck, uh, you know, on your own time on a track, something like that, uh, then you should be able to do it and the car was preventing that. So I think that was a bit silly. So the three major complaints, uh, the lack of response once you're up to speed and getting full torque, the lack of response from zero miles per hour and flooring it and getting up to speed, and then finally not being able to fully disable traction control. So why is the Model 3 Performance the solution to all three of those? Well, the great news about the Model 3 Performance is that the front motor is an induction motor, and so it has that instant response. The second you put your foot down, you get that instant peak torque. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is awesome. So they fill in that gap that that rear motor cannot provide with the front induction motor. And so you get that insane pull right when you put your foot down, that instant response that makes electric cars so cool. You have it in the Model 3 performance. And I think that is just so awesome. So from a standstill, you get plenty of torque, zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds versus 5.6 in the mid range. And once you're up to speed, 35 miles per hour, as you can see, I punch it and <laughs> it pulls quite hard. So it is super exciting. I love this thing. It is quite cool, uh, the difference that that motor makes. And also, you know, they're giving you sport mode. So they're taking out some of that tune delay with this sport mode uh, in the Tesla Model 3 Performance. So that covers the first two complaints. The final complaint was about traction control and of course the Model 3 Performance. With the Performance Package, you get track mode. And so track mode enables you to take off some of those nannies that are gonna say, you know what, you shouldn't get dumb, you shouldn't be sideways in a car ever. Uh, so track mode allows you to get sideways. It plays with the fact that it has two motors to work with, so it can help you get out of an oversteer situation using the front uh, motors. It can help you get out of a understeer situation using that rear motor. Uh, and so it makes the car much more playful, allows for wheel slip, allows the traction control to back off a bit and let you have some fun. So quite cool that the Model 3 performance comes with that track mode. So as I mentioned, those are the three main reasons that kind of convinced me, uh, you know, I, I should have gone with this one from the start. Uh, you know, the mid-range price-wise is about halfway between the base Model 3 if it ever comes out at $35,000 and the Model 3 Performance, which is now listed at $62,000. So the mid-range is about halfway there, but yet it still has the performance and the driving characteristics of that base Model 3. And I think that's a little bit disappointing. So, you know, the fact that I was already spending the money up to the mid-range, to me it seemed justified in going a little bit further and, you know, getting all of the cool performance benefits. It feels like something that I'll actually want to keep for a very long amount of time. The mid-range, I was kind of already questioning it once I started driving it. You know, is this something that I want to own long Long term and this definitely is it is very cool I absolutely love it it's a great daily driver that has all kinds of crazy response um, and I'm super excited about it all right so what are the mechanical differences between the model 3 mid-range and the model 3 performance so the mid-range is coming with 258 horsepower the model 3 performance is at 450 horsepower 471 pound-feet of torque thanks to the additional motor up front now one of the things I was surprised by and one of the reasons why I like the idea of the mid-range was that it is significantly lighter. According to Tesla, it's about 400 pounds lighter. The mid-range weighing about 3,700 pounds. The Model 3 Performance weighing 4,100 pounds. However, on my bill of uh, origin for the Model 3s, for both of them, it has a weight listed for the shipping weight of the vehicle. And the weight listed for the Model 3 mid-range was significantly higher than Tesla lists versus the Model 3 Performance uh, was only a couple pounds higher than what Tesla lists. So I think the real difference, uh, rather than about 400 pounds, according to my bill of origins for both of my vehicles, the actual weight for the Model 3 performance is only about 250 pounds versus 400 pounds heavier than the mid-range. The battery packs are of course different also, so the mid-range with about 264 miles of range, the Model 3 performance with 310 thanks to a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack versus a low 60s kilowatt hour battery pack in the Model 3 mid-range. 
The Model 3 also comes with 20 inch wheels and Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. So you get better tires on the Model 3 performance and the largest wheels that you can get on the Model 3. You also have a lowered suspension versus the mid-range. It does come with a carbon fiber uh, spoiler, which you won't see on my car because it doesn't actually come with it from the factory. At some point, I guess, Tesla's gonna come to my house and install it. I believe that's what's happening. Um, strange, I guess they ran out of parts, so they're shipping them without the carbon fiber spoiler. Spoiler. You also get significantly larger brakes with the Model 3 Performance with the Performance Package, which now comes standard with it. So larger brakes up front, um, over like an inch and a half larger, I believe it is, quite a big difference. And uh, you also have significantly larger brake pads on them. So much thicker brake pads. So if you were to take it to a track day or something like that, you don't have to worry about those uh, brake pads wearing down all the way. You've got plenty of pad on there to, for a couple, you know, track sessions. And of course, with the Performance Package, you get track mode. And so all the the benefits that come along with track mode and you also have a raised top speed of 155 miles per hour. So aside from being heavier and I think the weight difference is less than what Tesla claims, aside from being heavier the Model 3 performance is better in pretty much every way and it just has that incredible thing that electric cars do in that you put your foot down and it's all there immediately. 100% of the power right there, right then, just incredible. Let's bring the, let's bring the tone down a little bit add in a couple noise, a couple noises uh, yeah and you know here's the thing like Detroit Auto Show they just unveiled the Shelby GT500 and that car I have just been so excited about when I saw that unveiling uh, but but electric cars can still be incredible the, the GT350 is one of my favorite cars I've ever driven and yet this thing just makes me equally as happy it doesn't sound the same uh, it's, it's got this sound instead uh, but Man, this thing just, <laughs> you put your foot down. It is unreal how quick this car is. <laughs> Model 3, what is up, dude? I'm gonna give a peace sign. He waved, right on. <laughs> All right, so I'm happy about it. Okay, let's get into uh, the defects that came with this car. So, you know, this is again leading into that discussion about did I receive a special treatment from Tesla? I absolutely did not. Now, this car came out so much better than my mid-range. It didn't have any paint scratches on it, which I was very excited to see. And all of the panel gaps, like literally all of them, are so much better than they were on my mid-range. So I will include the numbers uh, in comparison and show you the difference between the mid-range panel gaps and this one. And also, thank you guys for all your tips on how to use calipers. I took what you said to heart and, you know, I was able to actually use calipers the right way. They never taught me that when I was getting my engineering degree. So thank you all so much for your feedback. And okay, just a real moment for, for a second. If I were to actually dig in the other side of the calipers into the panel gaps and measure them that way I would have gotten so much crap from you guys about scratching up the paint so you can't win on YouTube <laughs> I like that there's a random nature into me saying that you can't win on YouTube and then just having this noise <laughs> afterwards you can't win on YouTube <laughs> So anyways, the panel gaps are so much better on this one. And I actually had an employee of Tesla who worked in paint repair. So if a car fails quality control, then it goes to this paint repair uh, center. And this technician actually reached out to me to talk about some of the issues I saw on my Model 3 mid-range. And he actually said that that speck of dust that I saw should have failed QC and it should have gone to him to be fixed, uh, that the speck was actually larger than half a millimeter and that would require it to actually be fixed. So what have I seen on this this Model 3 performance. Well, it wasn't as bad as the mid-range, but it still did have a few things. So first of all, there was a pretty sizable dent in the front fender uh, behind the driver's side front tire. Uh, so there was a decent dent there. Also, the middle pane of glass on the roof had two pretty decent cracks in it, one on each side. So I'm not sure if this is somehow when they're placing the glass onto the car, if that's when it happens. Uh, perhaps too much pressure being applied to it, but either way, there's a couple cracks in the glass on this middle pane of glass and then there also were more of those little dust specks underneath the paint uh, this time they weren't in very noticeable areas most of them were kind of in the door jams where you will never see them so I'm happy about that you're not going to see them uh, not a big deal in my opinion uh, based on where they are but they they do still exist and again the ones on this car were much smaller not nearly as sizable as the one that I saw on my mid-range so not perfect
perfect, but exterior wise, I'm very pleased with it because the core looks a lot better. It doesn't have any of those scratches and it is now covered completely in Expel. So I am protecting it from future scratches. Very excited about that. And yeah, that pretty much covers it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below. And I am quite looking forward uh, to spending some more time in this Model 3 performance. This thing is just so much fun to drive. Coming out of a corner here and put your foot down, boom! <laughs> oh man, it is quick. <laughs>